So this was me in 2015 trying to get the first FPV drone I've ever built into the air. I remember having a really hard time getting this thing to fly and when it finally did it flew terribly. And on top of that I didn't really know how to pilot a drone. I was just a teenager wanting to be cool like my idols on the internet just like Charpu. He is an absolute legend when it comes to FPV drones and some of his videos like Left Behind FPV and Right Between the Eyes FPV helped shape my future in this amazing hobby. I remember working my first summer jobs and spending all the money I earned just so I could buy everything I needed, like my first radio, the Eternogy 9X, here with my custom paint job. Since I'm from Europe and most FPV related companies formed in the US, I couldn't really afford the high-end OG parts the pros were flying. I had to get my parts elsewhere and the only real alternative was an RC online shop called Hobby King. Although I was grateful to buy everything relatively cheaply, most of it was just cheap knockoffs of the originals. Like this frame I got, which was supposed to resemble the Lumineer QAV 250 frame, the most popular frame at that time. But I managed to get decent enough parts to get me in the air. The flight controller I used was the NACE 32, which was the most popular choice back then. And forget about Betaflight, we were running software called CleanFlight on it, which later evolved into what we know and love as Betaflight today. In the beginning, most parts for these drone builds came from RC planes. Companies were really just starting to develop components specifically made for this type of FPV drone. For example, these ESCs were the same ones used in airplanes, but since drones require faster input processing and quicker response times, custom firmware was quickly developed. I remember flashing Simon K firmware onto these ESCs. You had to use special flashers and the custom flashing tool for the chip and everything was just a big hassle. But the whole FPV drone scene was just starting to get popular and a lot of development happened over the next couple years. And did you know that back then the on-screen display wasn't even a thing? I mean, the real-time information you now get in your goggles, like battery voltage or flight time, simply didn't exist in an integrated form. Nowadays, every modern flight controller has OSD built into the main processor, so people don't even think about it. Technology. But back then, when OSD was just emerging, you had to buy separate modules and wire them up to your flight controller. I never had one of those, and if you're now wondering how I knew my battery was about to die during flights... We used these things, called LiPo beepers, which attach to the balance lead of the battery, and when the voltage dropped below a preset level, the beeper would start buzzing very loudly to warn us. Super useful tool. And hey, do you know what these things are? This is a power distribution board, or PDB for short. And back in the day, every build like this had one. Basically, it's a centralized board that ran power to all your ESCs. This more advanced PDB also includes voltage regulators for 12, 9 and 5 volts, because different components need different voltages. Today, most ESCs and flight controllers have built-in power distribution features, so separate PDBs are usually not needed. In FPV racing and freestyle drones, PDBs are mostly outdated. However, some people still use them, especially in larger builds. Remember how I in the beginning said, I wanted to be cool like the guys on the internet? Well, that didn't really work out for me. I couldn't afford the fancy new Fetchark FPV goggles, so I ended up looking like this. I got this pair of box goggles from Hobby King and the helmet housed the 5.8 GHz receiver for my video feed, as well as the battery to power everything. A bit weird, but hey, it worked. Basically, this era was all about experimenting. There were no real standards for these mini racing quads yet. Everyone was just figuring it out as they went along. And I made this video not just because it's my 10 year anniversary in this amazing hobby, but because things are changing. 
With Remote ID rolling out in the US and new rules hitting the UK, I know a lot of people are feeling like their beloved hobby is under threat. And honestly, I get that. But this isn't a rant about whether those rules make sense or if you should follow them or not. I'm here to remind you everything we have today in this hobby, the tech, the software, the flying spots, the community, was built by people like you. For the love of flight, for the fun of figuring things out, just like skateboarding, this hobby was never handed down from the top, it was built from the ground up. So if you're feeling discouraged, don't quit. Don't let regulations be the reason you stop doing what you love. This hobby isn't going away and neither are the people who care about it. There will always be those of us out there building, flying and figuring it out together. That said, thanks for watching and keep flying. Thank <laughs> you.